Hello, Kayla. Hello, Miles. We're about to ride the entire Cleveland RTA rail system. What's the date today? November 5th. Oh, no. That's like most of the blue and green lines. Uh, Miles! Uh, I didn't know. <laughs> to do this. We're about to ride the entire Cleveland RTA red line and nothing else. Whoa. So this is Stokes Windermere Station, which is the easternmost stop on the red line. What are you gonna do your little map with your uh, you know, your face going like and then kind of tracking the line? Yes. There's a nice, you know, bus transfer bit here, but we don't care about buses today, we care about trains. Open the doors. This is a Whoa. big station for a very small train. What is this? Is this history? This is I think history. This is actually really cleverly displayed history. I really appreciate it. There's a whole waiting room, there's water fountains? And yet, we didn't do a water fountain test. Please feel free to unsubscribe. Non Free Wi-Fi? Non-hostile benches, yeah. A convenience store that appears not to be open. From here, it looks like we're looking up at like the Northeast Corridor or some other electrified main line, not a light rail that's pretending to be heavy rail. Ooh. I'm sure the comments will like that. Are those platform screen doors? What? Those are freaking Wait, wait, no, they're not. They're, no, 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 they're, they're, they're platform screen doors that lead to the platform. I have never seen that before. <laughs> I guess it gives you a, like a waiting area. Attention, fair paid zone. There are no fair gates. You just honor system. Attention, if at track level and train is coming, go to area under platform. What the heck is this? This is just, this might be the strangest metro system in the country. It's like the Skokie Swift grew up. It has poofy seats. I think this is gonna be very comfortable. Ooh, yeah, you kinda like, you fall down into it. <sighs> that feels good. <laughs> so dinky. All right. by Lewis Stokes Station at Windermere. I believe besides the MBTA blue line, this is the only heavy rail line in the US that runs on pantograph power. There don't appear to be station announcements, which kind of pull it into, I don't know what the station's called, but we're here. It's called Superior. Superior. So when they were building this line, they kind of took the path of least resistance and just built it along freight right of ways. We're making really short stops. Yes, and it'll be like two people getting on each one. This is a two-car train running every 15 minutes. And, well, it's near empty. We are now stopped. For reasons. There can't be train traffic every 15 minutes. Someone mentioned they're doing single tracking, so maybe they are waiting for the train coming back. There's no alerts about the single track. I mean, clearly it's happening if we're sitting here, but uh, very septa move to have a single track schedule that affects the schedule of the line. Just not tell anyone. We're leaving, but a train hasn't passed us. We're stopped again. Do -do -do -do. We're stopped again. Okay, well now that's passing us. Do none of the side signs work? Like, it's all just dot, 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 dot. And they just put a big, like, piece of paper in the window. Oh, that one doesn't have the paper. All right, here we go. Pulling into our next stop, which, no idea what it is, because uh, there are sometimes station announcements from the operator, but they're always kind of garbled. Cedar. Cedar? Cedar, Dash University. <gasps> That was the horn! Racing CSX, who's gonna win? How many American metros are there where you can do this? Yeah, get out of here, CSX. I really like that efficient move of opening the doors and immediately announcing doors closing and then following through on it. Pedestrian level crossing over there at this station. Apparently, why not? Some old rail infrastructure there. So if it was running today, this is where the light rail joins us. The red line and the light rail actually run on the same tracks, which as far as I know is the only place in the US where that happens. But they want to replace everything with light rail, so this might actually be the first heavy rail metro to be converted to light rail. Oh, these are the light rail trains. So you can see the light rail has low, like, foldy doors. Basically, these platforms where the red and the light rail share track 
There's like a red section and then a blue green section that's lower down. You just have to go between them. Oh, this is both light rail and heavy rail trains in the same yard. So you can see the difference here. I mean, this is definitely a case of like, it's sort of a gray area between what's considered light rail and what's considered heavy rail. Was that just an automated announcement, by the way? Very quiet. Very quiet. I, I don't get anything about this line. I think we're just going insanely slow. this like like uh, how underground are we like because we're just like at ground level and the world is like elevated above us what the heck this station is huge. huge i think the way this one works is it's red line on the outside blue and green lines on the inside and oh right this is the only station with fair gates and you have to like go through the fair gates to transfer between red and blue slash green which Why? makes no sense this is a Huge station. This is nuts. Also, like at the single nexus of the network, there's still only like seven people on this car. Immediately after Tower City, it just comes out again. What is all this? There goes the waterfront line, which is no longer a thing at the moment. That's the Detroit Avenue Bridge. The uh, lower deck used to be a streetcar track. Oh. That's the river that caught on fire. This is actually a really cool vibe. There's an amazing view of the city yeah. back there that I can't see very well because we're on the wrong side. There are also so many slow zones. Like, there's just a lot of points where we're going seemingly like 10 miles an hour. They built a massive park and ride in the middle of a neighborhood. It's not even that filled up. Like, there's barely any cars in there. All these stations are so... I mean, arguably overbuilt, like just massive for two car trains they're getting. I know. This is another park and ride that seems to be pretty empty. We're kind of keeping pace with the cars on the highway. Sort of. This train is very rattly as it gets fast. This is the second to last stop and it's very industrial. So funnily enough, the Cleveland Red Line was the first rapid transit line in the U.S. to directly serve an airport when it was built in 1968. So that's what the last stop of this line is. Here we go underground. You see there's people in the, under the lights? There's like portraits of people. Wait, this station's really cool. <laughs> It is completely flooded down there. Exit to terminal, I guess. Let's see what the connection is like. Wow. That's a really easy connection. This is a two and a half minute yeah. shot. That is actually incredible. For the, for the first two. It's like, it's not just a proof of concept. It's yeah. a functioning transit connection. It's even well signed from here. Train to downtown. So I was looking at this map and I discovered that it's not meant to actually be printed as a poster. It says C reverse for downtown. There's no reverse. It's amusing that there's a bike rack in the airport station. Doors opening. Step back to a mile Your doctor should check for infections like TB and blood tests. Wow, I do need to check for infections. gotten off at West 25th to go get food at the West Side Market. Very transit accessible. Stops on the red line? It was interesting. They probably should have put the dollars they put into building this into building the uh, Euclid Avenue route as right. an actual train instead of a BRT. A lot of the stops are just kind of park and rides or, or very kind of industrial. Or very overbuilt. Houses. Yeah, right. But the airport connection was a pleasant surprise. The equipment was cool, the seats were comfy. Definitely a weird metro line that's worth riding, I would say. Is it? I feel like it's the sort of thing where you have now lived vicariously through us, you don't need to come here and ride it. Well, another thing you're going to live vicariously through us will be on Caleb's channel. We're exploring the temporarily suspended waterfront line using spin scooters. I'm going to be a frat boy. 